zamu iya koma gida nde gari ya ilafia ama idan gari be ilafia ba domin bai babu yere zamu iya muje ko a cikin state namu a borno ma babu zaman lafiya sosai ba kauye mu ma babu kowa sai tsuntsa yene kawai da namomin jeji suna gudu yanzu a haka babu kowa a kauye to amma idan Allah ya sa gwamnati ya duba ya gyara kasa ai kowa yana bukatan zaman lafiya ne to idan akwai salama kasa ko arziki ma yana ya waita a kasa amma idan babu zaman lafiya sai talauci ne ke tafiya a kasa Nigeria is presently faced with political, economic, and social challenges. Since 2015, there has been an increase in the number of internally displaced persons IDPs resulting from communal clashes, attacks on farmers by suspected headsmen, activities of Boko Haram, and natural disasters. A July 2019 report from the International Organization for Migration, IOM, estimated 127,713 persons have been displaced in Benue, Plateau, Kaduna, and Nasrua states of North Central Region. Benue state, which hosts 81,132,000 IDPs, is the most affected state in the North Central Region. Nasrua state hosts about 17,000 114 individuals, while Plateau State holds 15,981 individuals. There is economic, ecological, political, ethnic, religious, uh, imperialist factors. Uh, of course, the uh, enterprise of head in Nigeria is dominated by a particular ethnic group. So ethnic pro profiling has been very easy to be associated with uh, this crisis. And if you look at the history of uh, the community that hosts some of the, uh, the main headers in Nigeria, it's a community that has a history of uh, a jihad. In this country, in, in uh, 1804, uh, there was a jihad which changed the character of much of uh, what is called northern Nigeria. Uh, so some people said that well maybe this is an extension of that, uh, using the herdsmen as foot soldiers. Ms. Anap Vivian Musa is the administrative officer of Simji Girl Child Empowerment Initiative Orphanage based in Jos Plata State. She shared thoughts on the situation of children in areas affected by the Fulani herdsmen and farmers conflict in the state. Most of these kids are actually from the IDP camps. Um, some of them are single orphans, some are double orphans. The single orphans we took off the parents, mostly women, was because they were more than, the women had more than each probably six, seven kids. And we felt if we left them with the parents, nothing good will come out of them. I would say the situation is bad because every day, or not every day, every maybe fortnight, we hear of attacks. We hear of people deserting their villages, going into IDP camps. And then most of them, because of the amount of time in which they've been away from their homes, they cannot even go back to reclaim their land. So they're almost like, I don't know, they have nowhere. So it's really bad. Um, some of them have peculiar stories like, um, Nerat. Nerat is the only, the sole survivor of her family. She, the family was attacked and um, they killed the, um, her parents, her siblings, and the war mistakenly fell on her and they felt she was dead. So they left her and went. She, of course, after a while woke up and walked away from her village into another village and was picked up by an old woman. So she was staying with the old woman when we picked her up. Daudu is a rural community on the outskirts 
of the Benue state capital, Makodi. Since January 2018, it became a refuge for displaced communities from Nasara state and Benue state after a series of attacks by suspected Fulani headsmen on New Year's Eve. The IDP camp was not recognized by the Benue state government and so the displaced persons lived in inhumane conditions in hunger and joblessness as the crops they produced were destroyed along with their homes and sources of livelihood. A day after celebration, we are at home celebrating our new year. Unexpectedly, friendly came and attacked our, our, our family, killed a lot of souls. We decided to leave our environment to not pick any of our properties. Thank God, with the God and work, we are here surviving. But the situation we're into is somehow critical. That time we fly Nikom, come, nobody don't know. Are they sleep? I say one gun, they hear bagam. So fly Nikom, come. My father tell me, say, ah, uh -uh, sister, uh, my picking. Now fly Nikom come for this place. I tell him, say, it's like people they run. So my father tell me, say, my run. So some people they sleep, you don't wake up on the time. Then Franny kill him. That time we Franny kill him, you call police or um, soldier. Before the time we soldier will come, Franny don't run. Franny so started fighting with us. And we all lost our life, lost our properties, lost whatever we have. And our things all were born in the house. We could not be able to take it out so that we can survive. But the only way we have just to run and lift it there because it does not carry our life. So I don't know the place where I will sleep. So I come here. Then I know I know see anybody here. Then I carry my car away, find a key, key with my children, uh, with people. Then those people are there close to me to village. Then I come gather here. I come sit down here. So there's no anything to here. Now no food, nothing, nothing. Just at the manage. A day here like that. Stress has its severity. So when this persists over time, these people will end up becoming anxious. They develop anxiety disorders. They develop depression because some of them actually tell you, I am sad. And when we use instruments to assess depression, more than half of them were depressed in the moderate and the severe. Then for those that are predisposed to having mental illness, some can actually break down with schizophrenia. Yes, because the stress itself can break them down, especially if they are predisposed to having a mental illness. And then a, a, a lot of them go into drug abuse. And when I asked one or two of them, they said that it keeps them, it gives them the life they want. It makes me happy, as a 21-year-old told me that. He said, Mommy, it makes me happy because I am depressed. That, that was his word. I am depressed, so if I take alcohol, I feel some relief. The experience is that most of these people, they, they have psychological trauma. We have what we call acute stress reaction. Usually when we talk about acute stress reaction, people have um, um, uh, flashbacks about the problem. They are not able to sleep well. They have tattooed responses and all that. Over a period of time, that will resolve on its own for most people. So for most people in the IDP camps, those things usually resolve. But for a number of people, it will progress to uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And some of them can actually go on to have um, depression, anxiety disorders following these um, encounters. There's a lot of fear amongst them. There is fear. They see the world, the, the future as bleak because they don't see anything good happening to them again. And there's a lot of anger and aggression. Of course, there will be this because they are stressed out. Food supply is not adequate. The only good thing they have on the IDP camps mostly is security. They have the military on the, on the camps. But psychologically, most of them are drained. They don't sleep well. Some, uh, some don't eat well because they tell you that the food they give them is not what they want. So they, they grow very, very angry. For the young children, they don't have enough playground. And some of the IDPs, especially in Taraba, 
the IDP camps are nothing to write home about. They are dilapidated and they don't, they are not humane. Some of them actually said that. A 2018 study by Jire Do Foundation on the situation of internally displaced persons in Benue State revealed that as at the end of October 2018, over 82,658 households were displaced between 2016 to 2018. Before the camp was not even organized, it, wasn't even, it, was, it was not even approved by government. It was NGO and some of the, in fact, missionaries and nobody give us assistance. Sometimes the blood food for us, so for us to take baths and eat some other things. Later, towards a year, towards December, towards November, December, MSF started visiting us. They look at how we are suffering. In fact, if you can look at the, the, the tent, it was even more still need that we are protecting ourselves. It is when they came, they discovered that human beings are staying in that environment that is not convenient. They now look around and say, okay, they, they went and brought some of the plastic blood to tap for loss to at least protect for a little bit. Now, if you can watch around, the, all the tents made, they are the one making all those tents for loss. By the end of June 2019, the Benue state government seemed to have recognized the Daudu IDP camp with the presence of the state emergency management agency, SEMA, at the camp. However, the crisis seems to be beyond the state government, with the arrival of more displaced persons from local governments across Benue State. Instead of resettling the internally displaced persons, the camp is expanding. What we see as manifestations of this crisis are that people, farmers, who are substantially sedentary, and the area you're talking about is what could be called the Green Belt of Nigeria, it's also the Agricultural Belt of Nigeria. Now, if herding uh, gangs come and disrupt violently the uh, livelihoods of people in this belt, then you're going to have a problem, not just with agricultural production, not just with the economy, but you also, also have a major security problem, which is what we now have. I think the root cause has to go, in fact, it has to go all the way to the federal government, if you, if you ask me. This restructuring they're talking about, I think it, it would solve a lot of problems, but they don't want to. If they restructure, at least we have uh, state police, we'll have state police, and we'll have enough workforce to help handle what is on ground. But because they have refused to, it's escalating. I'll say escalating because till date, they're still having attacks. People don't hear about it because they're trying to mom it, but the attacks still go on. Already, we and Flanny, there was no program. Now we don't even know what caused program between we and uh, Flanny and we now, we people now. There was no program. That is at the age of, when I was at the age of even 10 years, my forefather has been telling us, we and Flanny is like we are brothers and brothers. There was no program. So this thing, it is how it is even started at that of 214. I did not even know the cause of how it even started. So now, I can't even know. I can't even tell you this, the cause of what brought this gang crisis. It's only God that knows. We were living in good tents. But now, we've been at tents going back to our villagers. But some of our people, some of our relatives are tents going back to our villagers, they are being killed. So we look at it around that if, if you though we decided to go like this, some of our life will be off. And then the annoying part is the headers are still in their villages, claiming their houses, claiming their, their land, grazing on their land. And the government is not doing anything about it, not trying to resettle these people back. The the one of the IDP camps in Rio, in the town hall, has been standing as an IDP camp for over six years now. For over six years, the government has not been able to resettle people in their homes. They're still on the camp. And in their villages, you see this Fulani, sorry, I'm using Fulani, these headsmen moving around freely. And when they want to go back, they tell them, I don't think you can come back, it's not safe. We've had, uh, we've, we've had peace building meetings like that, where the, the head will tell the villager that, I don't think you can come back. It's not safe. I cannot guarantee your safety. I mean, this is their home. You've taken it from them. It's not fair. Government has to do more. 
one of the things is that once um, crisis situation starts, nobody can know the end of it. Therefore, government needs to do the primary uh, duty of government is the security and welfare of the people. So, in a situation whereby during election period you saw so many um, uh, what's it called now um, security agents coming out, but when there are attacks, we don't see them. It shows you that there is negligence somewhere. And so government needs to take it more seriously. Look, the life of every Nigerian is important. You hear boundary, we give it different names just to suit our political inclinations, to damp, damp, dampen, I mean, deaden our, our, our consciences. Either you call it banditry, either you call it Fulani Esme, either you call it Boko Haram, either you call it intercommunal clashes. Lives are being lost. The manner in which we uh, develop our livestock in Nigeria, is that the best mode of doing that? People have talked about ranching. What is wrong with ranching? I mean, to me, ranching suggests that you bring uh, livestock into one uh, community, a, a created community, that you are there, the livestock of uh, health services, veterinary services, that within the ranches you are able to develop better quality of livestock so that their products are better, they are beef or meat or milk or butter or whatever they produce is of a better quality. The families of the herders themselves, their children can go to school, the adults can develop other skills, and you can actually also arrive at uh, integrated farming, whereby the herders also farm and farmers also herd. If you're not doing that, then it doesn't suggest that anybody is serious about a policy that can begin to solve this problem. I want to go because this place that I am, I'm not farming, not doing anything. But it was the only school that I used to go. No farming. When I'm in my village, I used to farm, do everything. We don't have a school building here. John, Dan, Kashitu. When rain is falling, we don't used to come to school. We stay at home. I want to go back to village because by staying here, I don't believe I have the freedom of staying here as if I, I'll be going home. So the assistance we need from the government is government. Now, the priority we need to get from him is to just tell us this is the time we have to live here because as we are here, government is also to taking care of us. So anytime, we, we are just waiting for his own comment, uh, this thing, uh, to command. You know, his wish is our command. It is when he will say we should live here, then we go.